Y'all got to see this. He pays absolutely no attention to what I'm doing. This is nose thing. A <laughs> hundred times a day. <laughs> he puts all his rig on. I got to get away because I don't want to get that stuff all over me. No Christian is in the kingdom of heaven. We're going to talk about that. You're going to see it very clearly. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven are not the same thing. I came across that information when I was maybe 17 years old, preaching on the street. And uh, an old, old man, kind of dirty, looked like a homeless fella, came up to me afterwards and said, son, you know the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven are not the same thing. And I thought, yeah, what kind of weird cult are you part of? And so when I was about 25 or 26, I began to study the subject, but it took me the next 30 years to work it all out clearly where I understood it. And that's what I'm sharing with you right now. The kingdom of heaven is physical, visible. It's a place and time kingdom. It's not the kingdom of God. <clears throat> when you get this clear, you'll understand the Bible a lot better. But the children of the kingdom should be cast into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. If the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven are the same thing as we talked about already, then you got Christians going to hell here. Now look at it compared. Matthew and Luke. I mean, Matthew speaks of the kingdom of heaven and Luke speaks of the kingdom of God. These are like parallel passages. I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Now that is strange. Here's a prophecy that there's going to come a point in the future when people are going to come from all over the world to Jerusalem and sit down in the kingdom of heaven with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob who are dead right now in God's presence. That's not the kingdom of God. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Wow, that is, uh, if you don't know the difference, that may mess up your theology, wouldn't it? So here's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob coming into the kingdom of heaven in Jerusalem, and the children of the kingdom get cast into outer darkness. Now, Luke talks about the, something similar to this, but it's the kingdom of God. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you shall see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out. And they shall come from the east, from the west, the north, and the south and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. 25 passages like that where one gospel like Matthew speaks of the kingdom of heaven and another gospel like Luke or Mark or John speak of the kingdom of God. And they seem to be the same subject. But it's the very presence of those parallel passages that explains the difference by the different qualities and content he attributes to each one. Notice, in the kingdom of God, Luke 13, there shall be weaving and gnashing of teeth, He's giving that from the perspective of the children of the kingdom who are cast into outer darkness. They shall be weeping next thing when they shall see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God. Now, this is not until after the second coming when the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God have come together. David is ruling over the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is ruling over the kingdom of God. And the two have merged into one kingdom centered in Jerusalem. And you yourselves thrust out. He's talking to the Jews. And they shall come from the east, the west, the north, the south, sit down in the kingdom of God. So the kingdom of God is not here, <clears throat> physically, visibly present right now. Uh, there is no, the church is not the kingdom of God as some sort of a political institution. And that's what the leftists are concerned about. They're concerned Christians might want to bring in uh, a political kingdom of God. And they've got good reason. The 
world was tormented for a thousand years by the Roman Catholic Church, thinking it was the kingdom of heaven come to rule the earth. And then along comes Lutheranism, and it tormented uh, a portion of the church up through the Puritan movement in the early America, uh, attempting to enforce the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, th th they thinking it was the same thing, up on the human race. So the church has done a lot of evil being confused about these two, and there's justification for fearing what religious politicians might do. But woe unto the scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, nor suffer ye them that are entering to go in. So the kingdom of heaven was preached by John the Baptist and then Jesus. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But they refused the kingdom of heaven, the rule of heaven over the earth, and they crucified the king. So the kingdom of heaven did not come. It remained in the control of Satan and the president of the United States and the prime ministers and the czars and the leaders of the world. They now rule the kingdom of heaven. And all of them rule in an evil way. For from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. John was already dead by that point. So Jesus said, from his time till now, which was a matter of months, the kingdom of heaven, which John preached and Jesus preached, suffereth violence. And the violent had taken the kingdom by an act of force, so it can be commandeered by evil forces. Luke 4, and the devil saith unto him, all this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for it is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Jesus didn't argue with his underlying theses that he was the God of the world, that he owned the kingdoms, and he could give them to whomsoever, whomsoever he wanted to. Jesus didn't contend with that because it was true. Jesus did not rule over Rome at that time. He did not rule over Jerusalem at that time. He didn't rule over any kingdom on the earth at that time. The kingdom of God was resisted by everyone but a very few people. And the kingdom of heaven could not come because they wouldn't accept the king. So the kingdom of God is different from the kingdom of heaven. We read, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, they said, when's it coming? He answered and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. It's different. The kingdom of heaven does come with observation. Neither shall they say, lo here, lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. So the kingdom of God is spiritual in nature. It's not a physical, visible reign. Unless Jesus were present and was ruling, it would not be a visible kingdom. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. So the p presence and power of Jesus casting out devils brought the kingdom of God, not established it upon the earth, but brought it unto them at the point at which he was casting out devils. And he saith unto them, Verily I say unto you that there shall be some of them that shall stand here which shall not taste of death till they've seen the kingdom of God come with power. So the kingdom of God is power. It's not meat and drink, but it's righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And the six days... After he said that, Jesus taketh with him Peter, James, and John, and bringeth them into a high mountain apart, and he was transfigured for them. So they saw the kingdom of God come with power six days later, just as he said. Jesus answered, Verily I say unto thee, except a man be born of the water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So that's where you get in the kingdom of God. There won't be any children of the kingdom cast into outer darkness out of the kingdom of God, only out of the kingdom of heaven. Because the kingdom of heaven is ruled by Satan and everybody that's in this world is in that usurped kingdom of heaven. And this I say, brethren, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. The kingdom of heaven is corruptible and does inherit corruption. And the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. So when you go to church on Sunday, you're not going to the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is personal, it's individual, it's within you right now. Now when God gathers the whole church together during the millennial reign of Christ, and uh, we come and worship before his throne, 
then the kingdom of God is there on earth in Jesus Christ and extended to the whole universe. But the kingdom of heaven, which is now, was offered to Israel, rejected, and right now is under the control of evil forces. The kingdom of heaven at that point will be placed under Abraham, Isaac, and David. They'll come and sit down in the kingdom, and the kingdom will be established on the earth, and the prayer will be fulfilled. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's the kingdom that's coming to the earth, uh, ruled over by the nation of Israel and the Lord Jesus Christ and King David. So uh, this book, Eight Kingdoms, goes into much detail, complete detail on all these subjects. And it has graphs in it like this, where I compare the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. All the passages on the kingdom are used and here mentioned, not just one time actually, but many different times, examined different ways. You see the, the parallel passages there, like a harmony of the gospels, where we search out any question you'll have, they're answered in this. Now, I don't make a dime off this book. Uh, everything that, that uh, when you buy this book, every cent goes to taking the good and evil and putting it in the hands of people in foreign language, about 75 languages, actually. So I'm going to go, still working on my jet boat, so I'm going to go work on it right now and uh, let him edit this video and get it out tomorrow. <laughs>